be great for everybody else to kind of know who you are and kind of where you're you're connecting from. It'd be wonderful to hear from you. All right. So without further ado, let's get into our first project. Uh, so this was Ben, um, our members, Ben, Kristen, and Rachel uh, with Addressing Isolation and Digital Self-Sufficiency with the First Nations Kitchen. Yeah, thank you, Joel. So my name is Ben Van Wienen, and I uh, use he and pronouns, and I served at PCs for People. Hi, everybody. My name is Kristen Hansen. I use she, her pronouns, and I serve at Metro East Career Pathways. And I am Rachel Friedland, she, her, and I serve at the Project for Pride and Living. And as Joel so kindly introduced, our project title was Addressing Isolation and Increasing Digital Self-Sufficiency in the Native Community. The inspiration for this project came from a participant that I have served with continuously throughout my work. Um, she is Native, and uh, in our work together, she talked about how uh, and helped me learn about how Native people have suffered disproportionately in the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Um, because of technological um, disadvantage, economic, health, um, and many other um, kind of barriers in the way uh, of, of Native people in our contemporary society, um, this left uh, Native people um, really at high risk, and especially at high risk for social, social isolation. Um, so those were kind of the, the big uh, inspir in, uh, inspirational factors when moving forward and proposing this project. Our community partner that we worked with was First Nations Kitchen. Their logo is there on the left. And this is just a local ministry that provides fresh organic food to indigenous people in the Twin Cities area. Uh, we ended up coming um, up with two main projects in our work with First Nations Kitchen. The first project was a digital storage reorganization and standardization project, um, basically just streamlining um, how First Nations Kitchen stored their data and also putting on a virtual powwow for Twin Cities Native communities. So the digital storage project had two main goals, to increase digital self-sufficiency uh, for First Nations Kitchen and also reorganize and standardize their data, thereby um, streamlining the process of retrieving information and being able to help um, the community members more effectively. There were three main steps to this project. Uh, the first step was to record all the data. This involved uh, recording and um, writing down the location, uh, the digital location of 700 plus files in a spreadsheet that we were all collaborating on. Then we went through a reorganization and standardization phase um, where we reorganized all the files um, and standardized the naming schemes for all of these. And then uh, the final stage is just empowerment for First Nations Kitchen through an instruction session and ongoing assistance as needed. The main goals of the powwow were to connect the isolated um, people in the native community. They are, as Ben said, they're in a huge technological disadvantage. So we wanted to make sure that state they still had options to connect, even during a pandemic. Powwows are usually very social events. They involve feasting and dancing and singing, and just you know being able to connect with people in person physically. And that is not really an option during a pandemic. So we wanted to make sure that we could adjust that kind of event to make sure that it can be enjoyed even during a time where we all have to stay home for our own and everyone else's safety. We also wanted to make sure that if uh, First Nations Kitchen so chose, they could host more powwows in the future. They are a, <coughs> a food-based ministry. So it makes sense that their type of event to bring people together would involve food in some way in the future, even after the pandemic ends, or maybe even while it's still going on. Uh, we had a pretty good process. For example, we had weekly planning meetings. We would meet for at least an hour every week with our community partners to make sure that we were all on the same page in the planning stage. We all knew what was going to be going on. We all knew any changes that came up or challenges. So we were all in the loop in it it gave us the opportunity to really build a solid relationship with both First Nations Kitchen and the staff of Hook and Ladder who hosted. We also wanna make sure that we were okay with community outreach, that we were getting the word out to people who might find this event to be something they were interested in during isolation. So we also wanted to make sure that we were up to date on hosting and we wanted to end reflecting, making sure that we were staying with our original mission 
and that it was being effectively executed. Primary difficulty, we faced a few difficulties, but the primary difficulty was low dancer registration. And that was from a variety of factors, including the time of year, it was spring, some people are graduating, school is ending. A lot of people were in a very transitional point in the year. Additionally, powwows are usually very spontaneous with not as much planning ahead of time because they're in person. So we were having a bit of difficulty telling people, hey, do you mind enrolling for this a couple months in advance? Um, especially during a pandemic, we all learned that it can be very difficult to plan in the long term because plans are always going to change. And our powwow happened. Here are some videos we would like to share. Let me know if the sound is not working. Those were traditional flute performance and jingle dress, respectively. So during our time with FNK, we were able to spend a few months working with them. Uh, but at the beginning of our time with them, we sat down and had a conversation about their goals and what they wanted this partnership to look like. Unfortunately, we weren't able to complete all of the different projects that FNK was able to come up with. So uh, we think that FNK would be a great uh, a uh, service site for in the future for a CTEP member, just because they are able to serve a community that a, a CTEP doesn't work with right now. Um, and they have a lot of different goals that they'd love to be able to complete in order to make their outreach more attainable uh, to people in their community. Um, and then along with that, our CE group, so Rachel, Ben, and I all um, are voluntarily continuing our tech support with them in the future and want to create uh, and maintain a relationship with them as we move forward outside of CTEP into the rest of our lives. We also uh, learned three really big things, uh, patience and flexibility. Uh, Anytime that you're planning an event like a powwow, obviously there's gonna be some roadblocks that come up and we definitely experienced that. So learning to come at things with patience and flexibility was a pretty big deal. We also learned a lot about how huge of an impact resources and knowledge can have on a small nonprofit, especially when they're working with a community that maybe doesn't receive a ton of money from the city or state. So that was also a really big deal. And uh, I think the thing that we all were struck by the most was uh, the value of cultural literacy and working with a community that you maybe don't uh, identify with yourself. So we learned a lot about the spontaneity of, of how culture that we didn't take into account to begin with. And we all feel that we are uh, better equipped to be able to work with and support native communities in the future uh, in our work as we step outside of CTEP. We want to say big thank yous to CTEP for giving us the platform uh, to work with FNK because it was such a great experience. We want to say a big, huge thank you to FNK for trusting us and working with us uh, to support them and to Hook and Ladder for uh, allowing us to have a great outdoors space to have the powwow. And then we've got one last video here. It is the White Earth Singers. They're performing the flag song. land that we all occupy. The song that you're hearing is a song that every zip group, every drum group that is in what we call Turtle Island, or Native Country, every singing group knows this song. This song again comes from our prairie land. So I think we have time for some questions now. Anybody's got any? So again, you can put your question in the chat 
uh, I can add that. A lot of very cool comments. I did want to mention that they uh, we have um, gotten word from First Nations that they are interested in hosting a CTEP member uh, for next year. So um, that alone is kind of amazing, like as a one of the impacts of this project. That's really great to hear. I think they'd be an awesome uh, partner with CTEP. Yeah. Can you say a little bit more, Kristen, or or the other about uh, the neither the three the three of you I believe identify as Native American and how, like how did how do you feel like that impacted the project for you or um, can you, I'd love to hear more of your thoughts about that. Yeah, I guess I can speak on it first, maybe, and then somebody else can take over. But um, at the beginning of the project, when we were sitting down and trying to find a community partner, we really wanted to focus on making sure that uh, we were going to be in a support role and not in a leadership role uh, when we did find a community partner that wanted to work with us. Um, so we spent a lot of time like reaching out to people and offering you know, support in the ways that they thought it would be helpful and not you know, pitching a project to them, um, you know, right off the get go. And so, you know, like I mentioned, FNK had a lot of different projects that they thought might be really helpful to their organization. Um, and we really made sure that we were staying in a support role instead of, you know, taking mm -hmm. over presenting ideas to them. Uh, yeah, well, I'm guessing like if they're reaching out to want a CTEP member in the future. I mean, I, that would indicate that they had a pretty positive ex experience with this. So you should be really proud of how you navigated that. Yeah, we have a question from uh, from Greg. You know, are they using the streamlined data or what processes did you put in place that helped most? Um, yeah, they are using the data. Basically everything that they, that they previously used day to day we reworked, reorganized. Um, so they are using that uh, that data. Um, I think the processes that helped the most or that we put in place, I think that um, doing a lot of the that digital storage work um, alongside um, FNK was really important so that we weren't like passing something on to them that was, that they were going to be thrown by. So doing that instruction session, there was like a special session that we did with them about photos because we were going to organize those in a special way. Um, and I think another thing that helps a lot was we were leaving them with our entire data recording sheet. So like the original name and the original file path and then the new name and the new file path and what day we moved it on and what year it's organized in. And that that's kind of like a reference point. And I think um, I think they they found that very useful um, as they're moving forward. Um, so yeah, they they were very appreciative of that, and we were very happy that we could um, do that for them. And you know, that was one of like five ideas, project ideas that we came up with. So there's definitely um, definitely the opportunity for future projects with them for sure. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much to our first projects.